Hello guys, welcome to another video today featuring my T30 here and I got the idea to do this video because of you guys. Some have written under the video where I installed um, Q4 OS on this uh, that um, because I installed it on a compact flash card that uh, that is not, not such an ideal situation because compact flash card is not made to run an operating system really not such a modern OS anyway um, it's gonna wear out, it, the access rates are slow sometimes, yada yada yada. Guys, you're right, <laughs> it's not ideal. <laughs> um, I found that you can run Windows 9X pretty good on such devices, on Compact Flash or SD cards, but newer operating systems, eh, not ideal, and I know what you mean. But this was only a test run, and I like Q4OS, and so I decided we're gonna do the following. Um, we're gonna upgrade this to such a thing. That is a MSATA to IDE adapter. And here I have a MSATA SSD, which I've never used ever. Um, had it laying around for years in my drawer, and now I think I can finally give it to good use. It's only 32 gigabytes, but hey, that's a big upgrade from our eight gigabyte we have in here currently. And also, I will be able to dual boot it now because I have more space. So my idea is, my plan is to dual boot Windows XP and Q4OS on this SSD. And so yeah, that's gonna make it a good retro computer, also more reliable and faster and yeah, just better in every way. And while we are at it, we will also finally, I know you guys are dying to see it, we're finally gonna remove the old thermal paste or what's left of it anyway and replace some with some new fresh one. And maybe even clean out the fan, maybe it's dirty. I don't know, I've never opened this up, so probably is a little dirty. It's gonna be fun. I always love working on those old think pads. And this one's working great, so why not, you know, give it a little bit of a maintenance. I know that the CMOS battery in this is dead too. And I even had this one guy commenting, oh, I would watch where you upgrade all the CMOS batteries and all of your computers. And, you know, while that's cool, <laughs> kind of a boring video to be honest with you, but while that would be cool, yes, the problem is it doesn't really, I don't really benefit from anything because those things are mostly laying around, you know, these are mostly off and not doing anything. So this CMOS battery, uh, it's just not really worth investing in, I think. But such an adapter with such a SSD, I think that is always something you can do. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, since this is a ThinkPad, we're not gonna have big troubles getting inside of it. So that's pretty simple on a T30. Uh, we will just for precautionary measures take out the battery. I think it doesn't even hold a charge anymore, but yeah. Here is the CMOS. If you want to change it, you can do it. Pretty simple. You just slide out this tray and that's it. And uh, yeah, now we will unscrew those screws holding in the keyboard. And I think that is this one and this one. And we'll just take off this whole compartment door just to be sure. So why don't we take this off too and just see what's under there. I think there's the wireless card in there. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Ah, uh, okay, this came right through, so we didn't even have to do that, but we did it anyway. Oh, there is no wireless card in here. So you could upgrade this to a Wi-Fi computer. Which uh, would be cool if I could find any of these things. So screw number two is here. And that should be it, guys. Yeah, I can't really believe it myself. So, I'll also take off this door, which is the RAM door. Oh yeah, I know that my heater is going in the background, so if you hear any noise, I'm really sorry, but we got minus 11 degrees Celsius outside, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid it is necessary. Here is the RAM compartment. Unfortunately, this RAM slot doesn't work, which is a well-known issue on those models, unfortunately. You can probably fix it by reballing it, but ah, 
it's fine. We got a gigabyte of RAM in here. It's enough for XP anyway. So, yeah, um, while we're at it, I think we can also just remove this hard drive tray screw because we will need to access the HDD anyway. Uh, this It wouldn't be this channel if we didn't have some sort of fail in the video. Um, it's not catastrophic, it's just a little cosmetical problem. As you can see here, this tray, uh, it's just probably too old at this point, so he couldn't stand this, these forces and he just cracked a bit, which is ugly, yes, but it's not the end of the world, it's, it could be worse. So it didn't crack, snap off completely, which I'm grateful for. Um, I don't know, maybe it caught onto something where it wasn't supposed to. I probably didn't do anything wrong, it just got stuck somewhere. And uh, yeah, I'm afraid that's what happens sometimes. So with that said, here is the old adapter, which works great. Um, we'll probably put that to use in another old computer or some, something um, with the compact flash. And uh, I only 8 gigabytes, so we'll upgrade this quite a bit. Actually, four times that storage what we have now. Okay, uh, so let me first, though, um, remove that keyboard and see if we can access the CPU heatsink. So, yeah, I'm really curious how that works. Let's flip it over. And... Ah, okay, I could already see that it came up a little bit. Um, it's my pencil here. Let's see what uh, we have to do. Just gently trying to... Oh yeah, okay. I get it. Wow! That was freaking easy. Okay. So it came right off. There we go. That's our whole keyboard there. Hmm. Pretty simple. And here is the inside. So, I don't know what that is. That's some... Some sort of shielding. Some sort of shielding here that goes in right there. I can imagine that many, if not most of them, are have that missing by now, but mine still has it. Don't know what it does, but uh, yeah, you could probably hide something in here. <laughs> okay, and here is the cooler. Cooler for the not so beloved Pentium 4. The Pentium 4 CPUs, they all run very hot, and so this is no exception, unfortunately. But with a little bit of new thermal paste, I think we can help it out a bit. So let me try to unscrew that. I have no idea if that, those are the right screws, I just think they are because they are so close here. Okay, so that's probably not it. Uh, let's see if it moves. I think that screw for the fan also has to go. Oh, those are pretty long screws. Okay, let's see if we can fish that out too. Yes, that one. There we go. And now with a little luck this should just come towards us somehow. Looking looking good. There we are. So yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> okay. So don't even need to unplug this. I don't wanna risk, you know, ripping and tearing that. Uh, connector because it's just so old and brittle. If I don't have to, you know, why bother? So here is all that stuck thing stuck to the this thermal pad. We'll just go and clean that right off. So I cleaned off the CPU die. Look at that shiny CPU die and a heatsick. It's looking good again. So it's ready for some new thermal paste. And you could upgrade the CPU, although. Uh, in my case, I think I already have one of the higher-end ones, so it doesn't really make any sense to do that. 
Um, now, before I put on that thermal paste, I have a funny story for you. Recently watched a video where somebody upgraded her 2017 iMac with a CPU. And what she did is she censored the part where she put on the thermal paste because she was afraid of, you know, people telling her, oh, you put on too much or too little. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to... I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take those comments that tell me that. Uh, I just find it laughable at this point that so many people always get bothered so so much with that thermal paste on other people's computers. I don't know what's the deal with that, but hey. So uh, I'm gonna get it and I will put it on. All right, so what have we got? Oh, we've only the good stuff left. So I already used up all the crap stuff on the other projects. So. I have here some MX4, which is almost empty. Uh, if not empty, I don't know. Okay. Um, let's try to put it on. It's not much needed anyway. Oh, <laughs> this is all, guys. Well, I fear that's just not cutting it. That is just too little. Yeah crap so it's empty but well not worry we'll do a we'll do a mix here a completely custom thermal paste here for for you completely custom mx2 and mx4 uh, we'll just do a tiny bit of this i want to waste too much of it okay that's enough all right so now i reckon we have comments flying it is too much Whatever, guys. It's thermal paste. Just get over it, really. That's your only problem in life. We're living a pretty damn good life, guys. Let's then flip it right back. Um, the CPU fan is pretty, pretty clean, so they did a good job on keeping out the dust. And I know that because when I got this machine, it was covered in crap and it was disgusting and filthy, sticky and just terrible and it cleaned up so nice and in the inside there's all, almost nothing here so they really did a good job on keeping that out so I have to fiddle that back in here Let's try to get those cables out of the way there there we go sitting back in here good so now we can screw it back in and we're done. And we're done. With that note, that has been a IBM upgrade video. <laughs> okay, no. On that note, that's how he always says it. Okay. We've been watching too much YouTube. Just the quarantine fault, I'm afraid. There it is, nicely upgraded thermal paste. Should run a little cooler, which is always good on a Pentium 4. So let's put back on our cool little shield. I don't know what it does, maybe it helps with airflow or... I don't know. Um, let's connect the keyboard. There we are. Slide it back into place. It's looking good on that side, but it doesn't want to go. Okay, now we now it went. Just needed a little bit of force, but now it's in. So you know those can take a little bit of force. Those those won't break apart that easily. Okay, let's screw it all together and then upgrade with the sweet M SATA S. Uh, first, oh, that's the wrong screwdriver. It's a little heavy duty. <laughs> Let's close up that door again. We opened for no reason, other than I can show you the cool RAM. <laughs> but it's so nice that they made it so serviceable. I wish all computers were like that. But that's only wishful thinking because people keep buying all this expensive crap, which is basically throwaway design nowadays. But hey, just how it is. We have to deal with it. Okay, um, so that is here all done. And now we can proceed with our upgrade. First, let's see how this works. So here we have our adapter. 
zoom in a bit, you can see something. And here goes our M Seda SSD, which is a pretty cool package. Don't you think with those two screws, like having a separate knockout thing? Which flew right out here. Can't wait to get screwed in. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Oh gosh, I didn't really think too much when I said that, right? Anyway, um, let's try to get that out here. It's a Sunbow. Never heard of this brand. Um, but hey, how bad can it be? So we'll try to plug the Sunbow in here. So pretty simple. Similar to NVMe. Actually very similar. Just uh, a little bigger with a different way of mounting it, but basically the same. And I will use here those included two screws, which should do the trick. And then it's installed. That's all we have to do. Pretty fast. And it's a it's an amazing upgrade because you can at any time also uh, <laughs> you can at any time also upgrade this card if you need a bigger one without needing to change the whole adapter. So yeah, it's kind of shame to throw it out away, but yeah. So Sunbow, you make pretty cool packaging. So we're not done here with that work, so now we can put on here this plate which goes in like this. And how do we screw it together? Oh, on those outer on those outer screw holes. Should have done that on my desk. Not on the coffee table, but it's just occupied at the moment with other stuff. So with those six screws installed, this thing will never ever break apart. Now let's then transfer here this um, bracket thingy. And I'm just thinking, uh, am I doing it in the right orientation? No, I'm not. Or am I? <laughs> So, we have to do it this orientation, okay. So then, let's pop off this plate, which has already kind of taken a beating today. And screw off the outer screws. Which are a little rusty. How is that? Wee! There we go, it's free. And then we can just transfer that right over. If he wants to go over here. So, now that we get that done, just check in here if I'm doing it right, yes. Because the orientation matters, so this is how you put it in. Now let's put on that again. Come on. Ah, there we go. And then slide it right in. There it's always kind of jamming when the screen is closed. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong. Probably I am, I don't know. But, don't know why that always jams. Ah, there we go. Now it's closed. And now we can put at last that screw in, which is the HDD secure screw. And the battery. How does it go in this way? Good. And then we are ready to fire it up and hopefully it recognizes it, because if not, I don't know. And I have no alternative. Uh, it's got kind of dirty here. This table is a little dirty. Didn't expect that. Doesn't look like it. Let's go into setup utility.
entering the set of utility. That's good. Yeah, sea moss. I know. Get over it. And we have here a gigabyte of RAM, Pentium 4, 1.8. Well, I think there's an upgrade. Is that like a two gigahertz or something? Well, I don't know. It's kind of kind of useless anyway. Upgrading it um, doesn't really improve it all that much. And here is our 32 gigabyte M1. <laughs> so it's got the new M1 processor in it now. Um, no, it's got uh, the. Yeah, it's got it recognized. So that's good. That's good. That's good. Very good. Obviously, there's nothing on it. So we'll grab my XP CD and try to install Windows XP. CD is in. Let's reboot it. And start. Uh, you know what? I'll just set my date to something that it doesn't freak out. So set it to 2021. Yes, I'm doing that because every time you leave it stock, it will forever hang on the BIOS. I don't know why it does that, it's a quirk because of the dead CMOS. Um, but when you do it this way, it goes by faster. CD ROM drop. All right, let's see if it's booting mine. See, it's booting, that's great. Okay, now this will take a while. So I have here, uh, how do I put it, um, a slightly modified Windows XP installation. Um, it will install all sorts of cool stuff. It will also install like a different copying program which shows some details. It will install all the .NET updates, all the C++ redistributables, you know, all that jazz. So it's taking a while though. So I will leave it here, go do some other work in the meantime. And um, yeah, once it uh, is done, we will be back, see if we have to install some drivers. I decided to uh, include that part of the install for you because it's interesting uh, if it, you know, recognizes the SSD. And it does. It, I was just a little worried because it was stuck quite a while until it reached here, the screen. So I thought, ah, shit, it's not recognized by the XP installer. But don't worry, it is. Yep, can do it. Duh. But, you know, this is new tech. Windows XP is usually not used to such high-tech devices, so... <laughs> Honestly, it was kind of stupid from me to worry about this, because it does act as if it was an IDE drive with the adapter, so... I don't know why I worried about it. Um, I don't know. Just sometimes operating systems do weird things, so that's why I'm worried. But we don't have to be worried anymore, and I think once this is copied, it should go pretty fast, since it is an SSD after all. So it will max out that IDE bus for sure. So guys, uh, quite some time later, and now it has a fully packed Windows XP install on it. Um, I still need to download some drivers, but I will do that back home, because I don't want to uh, waste my mobile internet because of that. But um, yeah, it's almost done. We have... Um, I think the graphics driver missing and the sound driver, that would also be a good idea because uh, it has sound but there's no way to adjust the volume and you know, uh, it's not perfect. So, but the rest is all installed and oh my god, this thing is fast, like this is probably the snappiest Windows XP machine I've ever seen. It really reacts very fast, I'm just going to show you the boot up time and I suppose with the installed GPU driver, graphics driver will be even faster, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, so yeah, let's see how long it takes. Watch that. Get the Windows XP screen here. There it is. <laughs> That's probably, the, again, the fastest XP I've ever seen. So, yeah, uh, we're almost done. Uh, working brilliantly, very fast. That's amazing. So, yeah, what I will do is uh, I'll make a cut here and come back once I have the drivers. Man, uh, finally I'm getting around finishing this. 
Um, now I installed all the drivers and it's completely done. So it is really fast. I know I keep saying that, but it really is very fast for a Windows XP machine because you always, when you see XP, you think of slow old hard drives clunking away and you hear like that it's really working hard and you see the mouse cursor freezing and all that. Not on this one, it's really cool. So it's very snappy. Feels almost like a modern system when it comes to the performance. And it is better than most modern cheap crappy laptops because they usually are terribly slow when they run Windows 10 with all the services and all the bloated stuff on it. This one is super quick. <laughs> so that SSD really helped. Now is Windows XP the best SSD friendly OS? Absolutely not. It will, you know, wear out the SSD much faster than Vista 7 and later, obviously, but it's not that it's being used a whole lot, so it's fine, guys, it's really fine. Um, I installed here a web browser called Arctic Fox. You might know that from the back, and uh, it also works on Windows XP. And what's so cool about Arctic Fox is it's uh, a sort of an up-to-date web browser um, and, well, not sort of, it is an up-to-date web browser for unsupported operating systems, so for macOS Leopard, Snow Leopard, uh, Lion, and XP, and also PowerPC Linux, which is pretty cool. So that's something I put on here. It's not that I'm gonna use it a whole lot on the internet, because after all it's still XP, it's still kinda dangerous, uh, so I will not log into like my Amazon account or something. But, um, you know, for the occasional download or something, it's good to have a web browser and, you know, the, just the ancient version of Internet Explorer is not going to cut it, I'm afraid. Um, so, yeah, what can I say? I like it. It transformed this computer uh, into a much better system now. It's much quieter, so this thermal paste definitely helped. It doesn't ramp up the fan when it's idling as it did before, which surprises me. Um, so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, this is definitely now, well, the quickest Windows XP machine I have. That is, uh, that is pretty awesome. Well, I uh, might even use it for some stuff. Anyway, that is it for that video. Now, it's not that for this machine because I want to, um, I want to install parallel to Windows um, another Linux. So if you have any suggestions of another lightweight Linux you can try, like I've read through Linux Lite, I've read through Puppy Linux, I don't really like Puppy Linux, I think it's ugly as hell. <laughs> Not that I'm saying it's bad, it's just really ugly. Um, Lubuntu, maybe, you know, the good old Lubuntu, just let me know if there are any more, there are many, I know. Um, but. It's particularly interesting because this is a rather old system, you know, Pentium 4 doesn't have all the modern instruction sets, so um, yeah, that's something uh, more involved there. Uh, anyway, that's it for this video. Quite enjoyed the upgrade, transforming it into a cool Windows XP machine. So thanks again for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.